few minutes here on the politics surrounding the presidential election and what happened afterwards uh, and what effect that's going to have specifically on New Jersey's Republican Party, which is gearing up for a uh, governor's race this year. Here to talk about that is Republican National Committee man for New Jersey, Bill Palatucci. Bill, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks, David. Good to, good to be with you. So the president has been impeached now twice. Is this the beginning of the end of his influence on the party nationally and, and in New Jersey? Um, listen, I think he's had, uh, you know, uh, a limited influence in New Jersey uh, to begin with. Just look at the results of uh, this past election. I live in uh, CD7, worked real hard for Tom Kane Jr. Uh, running for Congress in CD7. Uh, Tom lost CD7 narrowly by just 5,000 votes, but the president in CD7 lost the district by 43,000 votes. So Tom Kane had to overcome the top of the ticket uh, going the other way by 43,000 votes. In Morris County, um, the, our Republican candidate won red Republican Morris County uh, with 13,000 uh, votes. Tom, Donald Trump lost the county by 12,000 votes, 25,000 vote swing. So um, it, it was difficult to begin with. Um, the, re, the, the events of last week only make it so much more difficult. Wow, you, you just overwhelmed me with numbers there, and, and I missed your answer. Is, is this the beginning of the end of his influence on the party? Well, I, you know, what I was trying to demonstrate, I, I didn't think he, was, he had a very big, good, very good beginning. And so, it, it, you know, the events of last week um, only made it much, much more difficult. Listen, the, the Republican Party has to return to its Reagan roots, um, a, a positive message, a, uh, a blue collar um, uh, working class party, um, which to agree, you know, Trump did, did energize. You have to give him, listen, there's a guy who got elected president of the United States, got 74 million votes, um, in, in November. Um, but, but the party has to do more than that, particularly in a blue state like New Jersey to reach out to, uh, you know, voters of, of color, of, uh, suburban, uh, you know, the famous now saying is, you know, um, college educated suburban women. Um, and try to bring them back to the Republican Party. All right, focusing on uh, New Jersey, where there's going to be a governor's race this year. Uh, the former state Republican chairman, Doug Steinhardt, uh, seemed to be a viable candidate, but he dropped out this week to the surprise of many. I guess we got to take him at his word that unforeseen professional obligations are the reason. But do you think the, the pro-Trumpiness of his campaign um, had an effect? Well, I, I haven't spoken to Doug yet. We're, we're good friends. I think highly of Doug, you know, personally, but um, uh, it, it had to have an impact. Um, the, the, the president's, you know, losing the state, as I said again in November, by, you know, a wide, wide margin. And then, uh, you know, inciting this riot uh, upon the, the nation's capital you know, only made it more difficult. So I don't know how anybody, you know, thought uh, they were going to, you know, run a race in a general election in the state of New Jersey, you know, as a, as a Trump candidate, just not going to work. Does it look to you like Jack Cittarelli has a clear path to the Republican nomination now? I mean, it's getting a little late for someone to jump in, right? I, I think that's right. I think Jack, um, remember too, Jack's had a year head start. Jack's been working at this at the grassroots level for, for over a year as yeah. a declared candidate. You've seen that in a lot of endorsements that he's had. So, um, uh, uh, you know, absent something unforeseen happening, yeah, I think Jack uh, is, is, will be our nominee. You know, a lot of the county chairs have stepped up and said they're with Jack, you know, in New Jersey. Um, we have a, a system based on uh, county endorsements, uh, and, and so all those seem to be uh, almost completely lined up for Jack. Right. Is the party better off without a primary? This way they can focus on, on uh, the incumbent? Um, I, you know, I think that depends on cycle by cycle. Listen, I've been involved in lots of primaries. I don't uh, shy away from that. But a lot of times I think it makes no sense. I thought it made no sense for Tom Kane Jr. to have a primary last year in CD7. Um, but, you know, uh, primaries are, are, are typical, uh, can, can be a good thing. Uh, Chris Christie had a primary in 2009. I think it, it sharpens uh, your skills and your message. Um, but in, in a year like this, 
you also get to uh, conserve resources. Uh, you get to focus on the, the general election. Um, and so in that sense, uh, I think it's a bit of a uh, advantage for Jack to, to avoid a, you know, a, a hotly contested uh, primary uh, accusations going back on uh, back and forth amongst the different candidates and, and having to spend uh, spend some money. So you can you can now focus your resources on the full campaign. All right. The season has begun. Bill Palatucci, Republican National Committee man for New Jersey. Always good to talk to you, man. Thanks for coming on with us. You too, David. Good to, good to talk to you.